hello everybody welcome back to my channel i am coming in today as you can tell by the title i am bringing up the rear of our September 2018 it has been a full month if you have been following along on instagram akram's ideas lifting pins and needles so many fabrics elizabeth made this in liz souls you know and i'm bringing up the rear with the deer and doe plantain tea we have been bringing sew alongs to you every single week for the month of september national sewing month and so i will be sure to link down below everyone's looks um and their links rather um, so you can go check them out if you have been following along. We've pretty much brought you an entire wardrobe, right? Because you have Akram is bringing you a dress. You have um, Karina with Lifting Pins and Needles bringing you a skirt. Um, and we have Fanny bringing in the Ruffles uh, sleeve uh, by Peppermint Magazine top. Uh, you also have Elizabeth Mathis bringing you the Megan Nielsen um panties and then Liz Souls is bringing you uh, uh, the So So Easy Bralette I believe it's called and I am bringing up the rear with the Deer and Doe Plantain Tea and so you really have an entire wardrobe now keep in mind not all of the um, depending on your size and your style or whatever it is that you particularly like some of these may or may not um, fit into your personal um, style plan um, but there are some good tips that you might be able to pick up throughout all of the videos. So I encourage you to check them all out. And as I said, I will link them all below. And so let me share with you what I am bringing in to you today. I am bringing in to you, as you can see, but by, um, by the, I think over here, I will put up the picture of the Deer and Doe Plantain Tea. And so let me talk through to you the sizing for this pattern. Now, um, initially when I chose this pattern, I didn't pay attention very closely to the sizing and I thought the 52 was the size, the fullest size of the bust measurement, which it was not. It's actually, and I'll pop up a picture here, it's actually the bust um, goes up to 45 and 5 8 inch and um, the finished garment measurement shows at a 44 and 1 8 inch. Um, so and by the drape of the shirt and by the finished garment measurements, I don't know why the finished garment measurements are smaller because it is kind of, is not a fitted tee. Um, but at any rate, so I went ahead and worked with it. And what I did was um, I just cut out the largest size, which as you can see is the, is labeled 52, but it's a bust of 40, the 45. And so what I did was I used, I followed um, Andrea's um, method grading up a pattern from um, a couple sizes. I graded up the pattern two sizes and um, I'll show a little bit of that. I'm not going to show the grading process because that's not what the sew along is about. I just want to share with you how I got the T to fit me. Um, instead of doing a full bust adjustment. It's much easier to actually grade up and then do your fit. And there's a separate video for those who are interested. I know this is beginner friendly this is a very beginner friendly tea and it is free if i did not mention that that link will also be uh down below in the description box so you can pick it up um but there uh if you do find that you have to grade up or anything like that it's better to go ahead and do your grading before you do your fitting and so having said that um, jumping into uh, the pattern itself. It is a very easy pattern, four simple steps, and you're done. That is it, and it's four pieces. Four steps, four pieces. And so what I have on is the original, and I'll pop up pictures here, um, but this is the first one that I made, and I say first because I wanted to see how the grading worked for me and if I need to do anything else to the pattern in order to make it fit at all. And so um, for me, it the grading worked fine. What I was looking for was gaping in the neckline. There's no gaping in the neckline. I'll show the back. I could, if I wanted to, do a sway back adjustment to take out some of the fabric in the back. But for t-shirts like these, and I consider this a casualty, there may be times I want to tuck this in a little bit and I like the extra fabric in the back so it kind of hangs a little bit better um, back there if that if that makes sense. So anyway, so I didn't bother with that. But other than that, neckline, everything is great. 
Again, I will pop a picture so you can see better pictures of this. Um, but yeah, so I am going to go ahead and jump right into the sew along and I will see you in the end with the second shirt that I did. So stay tuned. And before I um, flip over, I wanted to share with you a couple of the tools that I that I used during um, um, the process of making this. I did use my ro rotary cutter to cut out the knit because both knits, this is a knit, both of the knits I got from uh, Walmart. But this one is, you can't really tell in, in this, in the um, camera here, but it's a, ve it's polyester super duper cheap -o, um <laughs> knit um yeah super duper cheap but it's very slippery it's very it's polyester and slippery the other one is more of a cotton knit but it um it rolls easily so i use my rotary cutter for both of those to cut those out i mentioned in the so long you can use your walking foot also i did not use my walking foot i'll talk about what i did and also if you want to finish off your hem band as well as as your um sleeve band you can use the um twin needle i did not i talk about that and to stabilize the neckline or the shoulder seams, I use the stay tape. And this is um, by, and I'll leave a link to this. This is Emma Seabrook um, So Keys uh, Knit Stay Tape. Very, uh, vit. this is some really good stuff. I have a few different sizes I have for woven and for knit. So anyway, just want to share those couple little things. So let's get right into it. Okay, so here's my Dirndl T. It's been graded up, as you can tell. I've graded it up two sizes. And so now I am going to cut her out and get to sewing. Okay, step one is talking about um, putting our uh, front and back pieces together. So you will see in the picture, step one is really stabilizing that shoulder area. So either you can use, as the pattern suggests, clear elastic I do not have clear elastic I actually have this um, um, interfacing um, knit stay tape and so I'll be using that if you don't have that you can use a ribbon um, here you can also use some interfacing if you have it here is really just so this area does not stretch out of place and so that is our first step and we will then move on to step okay, number so I just want to show how I added my um, knit stay tape here at the shoulders now I will take this to my sewing machine and go ahead and pin my front and back together and I will show you that once it is pinned together prior to sewing okay I do suggest if you have a more flimsy type knit that you are working with um, that if you do pin and you don't have wonder clips I suggest using wonder clips but if you don't have clips go ahead and use a pin if we can see that there take it make it go through a couple different bites here not just one through but two just to really help stabilize the piece so it really doesn't slip slip around otherwise go ahead and use your um, wonder clips and um, yeah that's my quick tip so let's get to sewing we are getting ready to sew I will show the one side sewing um, the shoulder seams together at three eighths of an inch and we will do this for both shoulders Okay, so we're getting here towards the end and I just want to share this. I, in the beginning when I first started sewing, I noticed that the uh, fabric was being eaten up down into the feed dog. So I am using a um, stretch needle, ballpoint stretch needle, um, which is key. Um, 
but it still was doing a little eating up. So either a couple things you can do is switch out this foot for a walking foot or you can still use this foot and just take your time going through there, um, play around with the stitch length. I am using a 2.5 um, stitch length here and um, I just put a little um, stabilizer up under here which is what I would use for embroidery um, just so it would not eat up the um, feed dogs wouldn't eat up my um, my fabric Make sure you always go ahead and backstitch. And there you go. Okay, so I just um, sewed my um, arms together here, the front and back. And what I've done, you, you don't have a serger. I showed you on my machine, my sewing machine, so you can finish off like that. But if you do have a serger, go ahead and serge your, um, your shoulder seams there. That's what I did after I sewed. Although I'm just showing you on the sewing machine, you don't have to have a serger to complete this project. But for those who do, make sure you go ahead and finish off your seams. Now I have my neckband piece here, which was cut on the fold. And so now what you wanna do at 3 8 of an inch, go ahead and stitch this close. And then what you're going to do is fold it in half this way, iron it, and then we are going to pin it in quadrants. I'm showing it a little bit different than the instructions show it. You will see the instructions call for pinning at the back, at the shoulders, and then pulling it down um, to the front. I'm going to do it just slightly different. Um, you can most certainly do it this way, but um, I'll show you just slightly different, and then we'll move on to the sleeves. But first, go ahead and stitch your neckband piece. Your right sides are together. Stitch those ends together at 3 8 of an inch. If I can see through there, yes. Make sure your pieces are nice and even. And then go ahead and stitch 3 8 of an inch. And then go ahead and fold this down. And then we will. I'll show you how to um, pin them to the neckline. Okay, so how I do my neck bands usually is just in quadrants where you would have the shoulder seams here and there so i don't put it together as necessarily shown in the instructions you can most certainly do that but what i do is simply just fold it in equal four parts the neckline and i put the pins in those um, points that meet and then i those two sections I bring those pins together and make sure it's even this way and then even the opposite way making sure everything is lined up really good and what I do is pin there and then I pin there and so I will do the exact same thing to the neckband piece I will fold it in quadrants and then I will um, attach it to the neckline at those same quadrants I will show you when it is attached okay so I have um, put the pins into my neck band here let me just pull this over to the side so you can see so the neck band has its four pins in it and what I will do is line up these pins each pin with the pin that's in the neckline neck band here and I actually need to turn this right side out so let me do that and then I'll show you where I connect each of these um, onto the uh, front and back pieces okay so this is right side out you want to make sure the right side of the shirt is on the outside and you can see hopefully my pants there's four two three four and so the four 
pinned quadrants of the neckband piece I'm just going to pin them in place at each of the quadrants here and then I will show you what that looks like when it's all done okay so I have attached the neckband piece to the outside of the shirt and so what I will do is now if you feel comfortable you can pin use more pins in between each quadrant here as you go around me um, I do I've done it a few times now um, and so meaning I've done um, neck bands a few times now so I'm comfortable with just making sure to stretch um, the this piece is the piece you want to stretch the neck band piece across as I'm sewing this first section and then stretch so slightly stretch again so this neck band piece stretch across the full length of um, the neckline all the way around and so I will do that on my machine first and show you that and then what I will do is finish it off with a serge stitch all the way around and then I'll show you how um, then I will finish top stitch all the way around the neckline okay so I'm at the machine and I just wanted to show you so here is the neckband piece here and then here's the um, front and back piece the neckline so what I'm doing is I will stretch because as you can see there is more neckline fabric than neckband fabric and so when I sew this what I'm going to be doing is stretching this piece to fit the excess fabric and when I do that, as you can tell, they line up perfectly. And I will do that between each quadrant here as I um, sew around, sew the neckband onto the uh, front and back pieces. Okay, so I will show in just a second my neck band. But I want to pop in um, the directions do talk about top stitching because once your neck band piece is on, and again I surged mine after I sewed it. Once your neck piece is on, you don't want that to flip out or anything like that. So when you top stitch, you will be able to feel here as you're going around it will catch that underneath and keep it uh, flat so what I did was go ahead and um, iron this down after I sewed it make sure everything was nice and smooth and now I am going to go ahead and top stitch all the way around I am increasing my stitch length to 4.5 just so I can um, uh, so it's a longer stitch even though I'm using the stretch needle and all of that just again just to make sure that um, there will be no puckering or anything of that nature so once I have gone all the way around I will show you what that looks like and as you can see here if I bring this in just a little bit yeah so you can see where the neck neck band attaches to the um, front and back pieces what I am doing is making sure this little groove is running along the groove here that meets and I know by filling it it's catching that seam underneath so I'm almost finished and I will show you how that looked when it's okay, all complete. so our neck piece is down as you can tell I've sewn the neck band on here and I did serge as I mentioned earlier but top stitching see how now that's not moving that seam that was sewn together so now that will lay flat I gave it a good press all the way around <clears throat> and now we can move on to the sleeves we only have a couple steps left and we are done now for this pattern it does have patches that you can do on the um, elbows I'm not doing that and I'm doing the short sleeve version and so I do like how they're having you put it in you're going to be um, laying the um, the sleeve piece onto the 
um, outside here of the um, of the front and back piece and that gets pinned here I am going to show that pinned and then I will show you how we will finish the sleeve off and then close up the sides and then all we have is the hem I will be right back okay now we have the sleeve piece it will be right sides together you have the um, front and bodice piece um, front and back bodice piece here. Here is the back as you if you can tell there there are two um, That's letting you know this is the back part and then this is the front of the shirt And so same thing with the pattern piece of the sleeve you have your notches where there's two if you can see that there's two and then the front is You have the the one notch for the right here where my finger is and so you'll match up those um, notches and you'll match up the center piece that goes here and pin all the way around and I will show you that I will be right okay back. so what I have done is go ahead and pin and what I've done is use my wonder clips because I don't know if you can tell this actually is a very slippery um, knit and so it was giving me a little problems with my pen. So I went ahead and switched to my Wonder Clips. And so I went ahead and again, right sides together, pinned uh, my um, sleeve to the bodice here all the way around. And what I am going to do is go ahead and serge this. And then I'll show you, again, you do not have to have a serger, but go ahead and either stitch at 3 8 of an inch or serge 3 8 of an inch all the way around. And then we will go ahead and close up the side and I will show you that once all of that is pinned. And then I will serge that and you will do that to both sides of your shirt. Okay, we are almost in the home stretch, but I want to pop in and say once after your sleeve is attached, as you, as you can see here, like I said, I surged mine. Um, make sure you press this seam towards the sleeve. Press the seam towards the sleeve, and that's just really to help it, um, again, lay flat. And so um, here is what you're seeing is just um, me marking because this was a... Uh, again slippery <laughs> and I just want to make sure I had mark my front pieces and my back pieces and I just use um, masking tape and marked it with a marker so that's what that is but anyway so now I'm going to go ahead and pin the sides together and show you how that looks once it's all done okay so what you can see here is that I have folded right sides together here is the sleeve here and what we're doing is either you can pin or use wonder clips again my uh, fabric is acting up so I'm doing wonder clips all the way down and you do have a notch on the side there to make sure you're matching everything up and go ahead and sew all the way down towards the end I'll show you what that looks like and then what I am going to do is go ahead and serge all the way around the bottom hem because what I will do is after I have surged that I'm going to turn it up by that surge amount and then I'm going to do a simple stitch all the way around and I'm also going to do that to my sleeve hem as well so once I have went ahead and sewed my sides down on both sides I'm going to go ahead and just surge the bottom so I can turn it up and I'm going to surge the sleeve hem and turn that up and so once that is complete i will show you what okay, that looks like so what you are seeing here is our sleeve is all together and i have sewn it all the way down and as you can see again i used a serger all the way down towards the end and then at the bottom let me just show you i just serge the edge and what i'm going to do is turn this up about that's about um, a half an inch there I'm going to turn it up and then I'm going to sew it on the right side um, all the way around in a stretch stitch um, for this particular um, fabric that I have here and we will be all set so I will show you what that looks like and um, 
in the final product. Okay. So I was just showing me sewing and what I've done, which you can use here, um, is a twin needle um, to finish off your hem of your shirt and the hem of your sleeves. What I have chosen to do actually is do a zigzag stitch. I switched to a stretch stitch here and I have my um, stitch length set to four. And so that is what I'm doing along the um, hem of my um, shirt as well as my sleeves. Now, again, you can use a twin needle for that. And if you're using your walking foot, obviously you can use your walking foot for that as well. Um, my twin needle, I'm not very good at using it. So I'm deciding to use the technique that works best for me. So once I have gotten all the way around the bottom of the hem, of the shirt as well as the sleeves. I will show you the finished product in All right, the everybody, that is it. Here is the final tee. This was my wearable muslin. It came out fine. So I went ahead and used this cotton knit that I also got from Walmart. Um, no gaping. And look at that uh, pattern matching, that stripe matching. I was only worried about stripe matching on the sides. <laughs> And so I actually did really good. You'll see it in the pictures as well. So this is a perfect um, start to if you want to make some teas. For me, this is a nice casual tea pattern. I will actually use this to make, I'll lengthen it. And this will be a perfect pajama pattern for me. Perfect. Because I like wearing t-shirts. And so, um, yeah, get some nice cotton um, knit and lengthen it. And yeah, this, will, this is like the ideal uh, pajama top uh, for me. And so, yeah, that is it. So um, you have until October, I want to say it's October 15th. If I got that wrong, I will put that here um, to go ahead and sew up any of the items that you saw across the entire month of September um, from any of the ladies and make sure that you use the hashtag September 2018 and um, tag Akram's ideas as well. She will um, pick a uh, winner. Um, I believe there are a couple uh, levels of prizes and so make sure that you go ahead and tag us. If you do this, tag me, Natural Dane, on Instagram as well um, so I can see your version. But yeah, that is basically it. Very simple, very, very, very simple. And so um, if you have any questions or comments in regards to the tea, please leave them down below. And yeah, that's basically it. So thank you everybody. Please stay tuned. Come uh, Wednesday, I will have a another video for you. And again, that is it. If you haven't already, please thumbs up the video and please subscribe. Hit that bell so you can get a notification when um, the next video is up. So thank you everybody for tuning in. You all have a fantastic day and have a blessed week and we will see you in the next video. Bye.